Krishna. Alleluia, Alleluia. Behold, our Lord shall come with power. He will enlighten the eyes of his servants. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it. You hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. So we're going through the prophet Isaiah, and we'll be going through the prophet Isaiah over the next couple weeks. Uh, Isaiah, like the other three major prophets of the Old Testament, right? There's four major prophets of the Old Testament. The first one is Isaiah. The second one is Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Does anybody know who the fourth major prophet is? Prophet Daniel, right? All four of them are considered the four major prophets, mainly because their prophecies are the longest uh, out of the Old Testament. Also, all of them are preaching right around the time of the exile, right? So many of them are preaching before, during, and after the Babylonian exile. Isaiah is the earliest of those major prophets, and there's a lot of debate amongst scholars about um, the meaning of Isaiah's prophecies because he has prophecies of judgment mixed in with prophecies of restoration. Uh, many scholars try to pull the book of Isaiah apart and say that uh, there were multiple, author, multiple authors. There's the first Isaiah, and second Isaiah, third Isaiah, etc. Um, I don't happen to hold that view. Um, I think there's not a whole lot of grounding for that view, mainly because that doesn't appear anywhere in the ancient rabbis or in the church fathers. Nobody thought that Isaiah was written by multiple people. Uh, part of the reason why scholars say that is because it seems like the first part of Isaiah is mainly about judgment, whereas the second part of Isaiah, beginning in chapter 40, is about restoration. Now, many scripture scholars ignore that almost every prophet of the Old Testament, right, his prophecies are structured in that same way. Oftentimes it starts with judgment, and then it ends with restoration. Something else that is uh, a problem with that theory is that um, even in the midst of the first half of Isaiah, there's lots of prophecies about restoration and hope, including what we heard from today. So I don't really hold to that view, right? But in Isaiah, what we're going to see is there's a lot of famous images from Isaiah. Many of the ways that we think about uh, the Messiah uh, come from the book of Isaiah. That's mainly because as Catholics, Isaiah is the prophet we hear from the most in the lectionary. So whether we've studied it before or not, we're all very familiar with different passages in Isaiah. And today we heard about the shoot that shall sprout from the stump of Jesse. Some of you probably, uh, maybe when you were younger, maybe your parents uh, in your home, you had a Jesse tree. Right? This comes from this chapter 11 of Isaiah. Uh, the Jesse tree is a great tradition, something that I've never done before, but something I think we should start doing in our parish. Maybe next year we can uh, send people the resources. But basically the idea is that all through the season of Advent, you have a little tree in your home, similar to a Christmas tree. But instead of having lights and decorations on it, you have ornaments about different ancestors of Jesus. And all through Advent, you read through those Bible passages about the ancestors of of Jesus. It's a way of familiarizing yourself with the family tree of Jesus. And one of the people on there is this man named Jesse. Right? Jesse was the father of King David, who was the greatest king of Israel. And so when you talk about the tree of Jesse, you're talking about the family line of Jesus's ancestry. Right? It's a great Advent tradition. Now, there's a few things that are uh, of note here in Isaiah. 
Uh, first of all, in the literal sense of Scripture, right, Isaiah is prophesying about the future restoration of the kingdom of David. Isaiah spent all through chapter 10 prophesying how because of the unfaithfulness of the people of Israel, right, they were going to receive judgment and punishment, and the Assyrians were going to come in and take them away. Right? So his prophecies of judgment. And that the kingdom would be reduced to a mere stump. Right? So the great kingdom of David, established in 1000 BC, a few hundred years later, uh, it would basically be reduced to a mere stump. There was actually a part of Old Testament history where there was actually only one living survivor of the line of David. It was in the time of Queen Atalia. She tried to end the entire line of David. And even in the days of Jesus, right, there were some concerns about the descendants of David. Uh, Herod famously tried to kill many of the descendants of David. In Bethlehem, he was trying to prevent the Messiah from coming. Uh, many of those people who were descendants of David, they actually lived in a town called Nazareth. Right? Nazareth is up in kind of the boondocks right, of northern Israel. It's a great place for somebody who wants to stay undercover, stay on the DL, right, would go. And the town of Nazareth, many people speculate, is actually named after this prophecy in Isaiah. Nazareth isn't mentioned anywhere in the Old Testament. However, the word netzer in Hebrew, right, from which the word Nazareth comes from, and right, it's the Hebrew word for a branch. So in this prophecy of Isaiah, God says a branch shall sprout from the stump of Jesse. And from that branch, a bud shall blossom. Some of you might know from your experience in planting trees, sometimes when trees get cut down to a stump, there is a branch that might go out and it might actually begin a new tree. This is the idea that Isaiah was trying to portray. That the old kingdom of David had largely been cut down and reduced to a mere stump. But one day it would be restored and a branch, meaning the Messiah would come from it and he would establish a new and even greater kingdom, a new and greater tree, a new springtime, right, you might say. So this very familiar image from the prophet Isaiah. And it's a beautiful thing to ponder during this season of Advent, and right? especially during the season of Advent. Advent is a time of preparing ourselves for the coming of Christ and putting ourselves in the place of what those people would have felt towards the end of the Old Testament. Right? That the kingdom of David had been long gone. The days of Moses had been long gone. There were not very many prophets left in Israel. They had been ruled by foreign nations for five centuries. And they were dealing with corrupt kings like King Herod. But many of them still kept hope that one day this Messiah would come and he would establish the new kingdom. And the sadness of the days of old would be passed away. And a new and even greater kingdom would come. I think this is a good thing for us to think about during Advent. Maybe some of us in your state of your faith right now, sometimes our faith can ebb and flow. And maybe you're in a time of desolation right now in your faith. Or maybe you're in a spot in your life where you're experiencing a lot of loss and you're dealing with that grief. Or for many of us as practicing Catholics, especially as daily mass goers, right? Oftentimes in the Catholic church, it feels kind of like we're in a time of exile. Right? It feels like the church is shrinking and many parishes are shrinking. But it's important that we always hold out hope that God always has the power to restore us and renew us. And even when it feels like things have passed away, in God's plan, he is creating something new for us. We need to always cling to that hope.